Hello and welcome. Today we're taking a look at more Dior Summer for 2024. So they have released things very slowly. We still don't have all of these items here in the US, but I will leave the previous videos down below. I have a video featuring the new Quint in Pastel Glow, which is this one here. And I also have one additional look, today's look, to show you for this one. I also have one featuring all five of the new Dior Attic Lip Shines. And today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at all three shades of the new Rosy Glow blushes, as well as all of the other lip products from the Dior Summer Collection. So I just couldn't resist. So let's go ahead and get started. So the Dior Summer Collection is pretty vast, actually. So we have two different quints. I picked up Pastel Glow. And let me just go ahead and swatch this just right up here so we can use this kind of as a reference to see how everything kind of goes with this palette here and then they've released three new backstage rosy glow blushes and five Dior Attic lip shine shades and in addition we have three lip oils three lip maximizers and three lip glows now the rosy glow blushes and the uh, other lip products, those nine, they are all going to be in the same three shades. So we have different formulas for each of the three shades. So let's take a look at them. So first up, we have shade number 61, Poppy Coral. So the color number and name will be the same for all of these formulas, the lip oil, the rosy glow blush, the lip glow, and the lip maximizer. So now here is the rosy glow blush in 61 poppy coral and you can see this is a nice bright coral it has a little bit more orange than a true coral so we've got a little bit of that warm vibrant orangey coral shade and if you're not familiar with the backstage blush formula this is going to be more of your traditional powder blush formula it's actually much better than the dior blushes in the uh, Dior Rouge kind of packaging. This is the Dior Rouge packaging. These are called the Rouge Blushes, and these are just not a great formula. The Backstage are now a superior formula to these Dior Blushes, in my opinion. So our next blush here is number 62, Bronze Glow. I'm not sure how well you can see, but there is some shimmer in this one. The Poppy Coral here, this one is matte. So there's no shimmer in Poppy Coral, but there is in Bronze Glow. And you can see that you can definitely build this up so you can get something a bit more shimmery, but it's still not gonna be a super shimmery blush. And this, I really like this shade because it's kind of this reddish, you know, oh, it's a reddish brown, like a redwood mixed with rosewood almost. <laughs> so I think it's really nice because a lot of these bronze shades we see have way too much orange or yellow in them. And this one definitely has more of that sun-kissed red kind of hue to it. And then we have 63, this is pink lilac. And this one here, you know, at first glance, it might appear to be a little matte, but there is some shimmer in here. I would say that the shimmer is even more subtle than that in the uh, bronze glow. And you can see the bronze glow is actually a bit more powdery. This is a little firmer in the pan. So if you really wanna build up that color, I'm just gonna go ahead on this swatch again, you're gonna really have to kind of layer and build this up to get more pigment. So these, so these are the three shades. We have 61 Poppy Coral, 62 Bronze Glow, 63 Pink Lilac. And we'll see these same three shades with the lip products. Now, before we move on to the swatches, the cheek swatches, take a look at this palette here, the Pastel Glow and you can see how well the shades from here coordinate with these. So this bronze glow, this is a bit more coppery than the deep brown in the pastel glow. It's almost a mix of these two together. And then this peach, you can see this is more of a peach, whereas this is definitely more of a coral, but they do coordinate. And then our lilac, it's definitely more pink in the blush than the eyeshadow, but you can see that they all go very well together. So let's take a look at the cheek swatches and talk a little bit about the formula. 
The Dior Rosy Glow blushes are made in France with 4.4 grams of product and they have a one year shelf life. This is gonna be more of your traditional powder formula. So it's not like particularly creamy, but it's not gonna be one of those loose dusty powders either. Now with each of these shades, as I mentioned, that of Pink Lilac is the firmest. So that one, it, it's a light shade, so you're gonna get light pigmentation anyway, but even taking that into consideration, it's just a little bit firmer in the pan, so you're not picking up as much product as easily as you are with the Bronze Glow or the Poppy Coral. Poppy Coral and Bronze Glow are pretty comparable, but I'd say the Bronze Glow is still just swiftly softer and more powdery, and you can see in the cheek swatches, Bronze Glow is definitely pretty pigmented, so it's very easy to go overboard if you have fair skin. So you can see in the demo for that one, I actually removed the first cheek swatch just because it went on so strongly, even with a light hand. So you really wanna make sure you tap off any excess if you're going for that lighter look. All three of these blushes perform well with either a loose fluffy brush, such as the Sonia G Classic Cheek from the Fundamental set that I used on the right cheek, or with something more dense, such as the Smooth Buffer from Sonia G, which I used on the left cheek. So you can see that you can definitely build up the pigmentation strongly with either brush, but definitely a buffing or more dense brush is going to give you stronger pigmentation more quickly. And yeah, all three of the formulas are good, but again, that pink lilac is more firm in the pan. So if hard pan is an issue, um, you know, that's the one that I would expect to see it occur in first. That being said, I haven't experienced any hard pan with any of my Rosy Glow blushes from Dior. However, I do just kind of feel like this one is so firm that if you have oily skin and you're transferring those oils to the blush, then you may end up with hard pan on this one. So just something to note, if you do have oily skin and transfer is an issue, I would definitely take an extra step and just kind of clean off that surface after using it. So I currently have three other Rosy Glow blushes. Let's just go ahead and swatch these. And we're gonna swatch these down here so we can just see how the colors compare. And I'll just kind of buff out a little bit of the bottom portion because I wanna save room so we can put our lip product right next to the blushes so we can see how well those coordinate. So that one there is number six, Berry, and this one is number 12, Rosewood. And you can see that the Berry shade, it's got a lot of purple in there. It's definitely gonna be a bluer, you know, cooler tone Berry with some purple. The Rosewood is gonna be a bit more of a neutral, warm tone rose with a touch of brown. And then we have 15 Cherry, which I have to say does remind me of a more intense version of the Poppy Coral. You can see we have more red in the Cherry, but I do think it is a really pretty shade. So again, we've got Poppy Coral, Bronze Glow, Pink Lilac, and then we have Berry, Rosewood, and Cherry. And I'm just gonna take the Pink Lilac again and just kind of put a little bit more of that right down there, just kind of buffed out because it is a little harder to see. Now my thoughts on these three shades, I have to say I do like all three of them. This one here, the pink lilac, could definitely be used as a highlighter for people with a deeper skin tone, something like a subtle highlighter or brightening aspect. It's what I currently have on my cheeks, so it's gonna give a nice light glow. And you can see that on the skin, it's more pink with a little bit of a cooler tone to it. The bronze glow, I think, actually makes a really beautiful bronzer uh, because, again, we've got that red in there and there's still some of that like traditional bronzy shade as well. So I think this is really pretty as blush or bronzer. And then the poppy coral is just a really nice basic coral shade. So here we go for those. Let's take a look at the lip products. Let's start off with the Dior lip glows. So these are the Color Reviver Balms, and I'm gonna go ahead and we'll put these right next to it. So you can see here is our Color Reviver Balm, our lip glow, and let's just go ahead, we're gonna swatch all of the lip products right now. And then we have the lip oil, and again, this is gonna be in Poppy Glow. 
So our lip balm is gonna be kind of a firmer, uh, waxy substance, whereas the lip oil is gonna be more of like that honey texture. And we have that nice big doe foot. And then we have the Lip Plumping Lip Maximizer in Poppy Coral. And this has more of a fine tipped flocked applicator that is more precise. It doesn't have as much flexibility. Let's add a little bit more of this. You can see the color a bit better. And that's Poppy Coral. So you can see it corresponds really well with the blush. The Lip Maximizer is a little bit more orange, whereas the other two definitely have a little bit more of that same exact shade of the blush. The lip oil, you can't really, you know, it's definitely much more clear. You're just getting a very light tint. Here's the lip glow in bronzed glow. And you can see this one actually looks a little bit more pink. As you have this on your lips, it does get slightly deeper than what you see initially. And I'll show you that in the lip swatches. Our lip oil for this, again, I love this big, applicator here but we've got a little bit more color than what you can see with the poppy glow poppy glow you get more of like this soft pinky coral glint to the lips this will give you more of your nude brown and then the lip maximizer is what i currently have on my lips right now and you can see we have this really nice more of like a coppery redwood so i'd say it's a little bit more red then the blush. Moving on to the pink lilac. And this is very light, but I think this one gives a really nice, soft, cool pink hue to the lips. Uh, it's still on the more natural side. It's pretty light, but I really like that one. And then here's our lip oil. And again, you're really not gonna see it much with this lip oil. It's gonna be pretty clear. You get a very, very soft pink hue to it, but it's, in my opinion, not super noticeable. And then here is the Lip Maximizer, which is gonna be a nice, soft, more of a cool tone pink. There's a touch of lavender in there. So let's take a look at the lip swatches. We'll start off with the Dior Attic Lip Glows, followed by the oils and then the lip maximizers. So the lip glows have 3.2 grams of product and these are gonna be made in France. And there is no suggested shelf life on these. So the Dior Lip Glows are the tinted lip balms from Dior. They have 97% natural origin ingredients. And according to Dior, they awaken the natural color of lips with a custom glow and up to 24 hours of hydration. These are gonna be a bit more of a firmer waxy balm uh, formula and they do have some highlighted ingredients that we'll see in the other lip products as well the main one that we see across all three products is the cherry oil which is supposed to protect against stress factors like drying according to dior it says the iconic dior lip balm infused with color reviver technology that adapts to the ph of lips to reveal a custom glow for up to six hours Featuring cherry oils, shea butter, and sunflower waxes, Lip Glow offers both custom color and lip care. It's available in a couture case and in shades to suit all skin tones. So I do see some differences with these shades here, but these are gonna be a soft, you know, more of a natural lip balm with just a tint of color. And I think these are nice shades. Now the Dior Attic Lip Glow Oils have six milliliters of product and these are made in France. And again, there's no suggested shelf life for these. And according to Dior, these are a nurturing glossy lip oil that protects and enhances the lips, bringing out their natural color. Now they don't note, it, note anything about plumping effects, but I do feel like I get a slight plumping effect with these, not as much as with the lip maximizers. And they do have that minty sensation. So just something to know. According to Dior, it says lip glow oils, non-sticky, non-greasy, rich and balmy texture combines the mirror shine of a lip gloss with the comfort of intense lip care. It's enriched with cherry oil for a pampering formula featuring a minty vanilla scent. It nurtures the lips with an immediate and lasting effect. 
Again, we have the Color Reviver technology, which reacts directly to the moisture level in each woman's lips for custom color while ensuring continual moisturization. The lips are more beautiful even when bare after five days of application. So the lip oils from Dior are kind of a cult product. I haven't used them in many years. Uh, I think they are nice and texturally, if you've tried the new Guerlain lip oils, they both have kind of a similar texture. The Guerlain definitely have more of that honey scent, whereas this has a little bit more of that minty vanilla with a little bit of tingling from that. The lip oils are gonna be pretty much clear. You're not gonna get a ton of color from them. You're gonna get a hint of color. And this is something that can be used to top off another color and just give kind of a little little hint of something else, you know, add a little nuance. The Dior Attic Lip Maximizers also have six milliliters of product and are made in France. They do not have a suggested shelf life on them. And this is the plumping lip gloss from Dior. So they were recently redone about a year ago. So these are gonna be in that newer formula. Nothing majorly different between the old formula. We do have that minty vanilla scent that we have in the lip oil, but it's a little bit more intense. You have more intense tingling, and after a few minutes on the lips, you will notice some slight pump plumping. According to Dior, it's composed of 90% natural origin ingredients and infused with cherry oil and hyaluronic acid. This Dior plumping lip gloss smooths and makes lips look bigger, leaving them hydrated for up to 24 hours. Out of the three lip products here, these are gonna be the ones with the most color. These are, will be your most pigmented of these lip shades. And I have to say, you know, I think that all three of the lip products are nice and it's really more just pick and choose what you like. But if you're looking for more color, you definitely wanna go first with the lip maximizer, followed by the lip glow, and then the lip oil last. Those lip glows, you can actually get more pigment from those with the than the lip maximizers if you really pile that on. Uh, so they are kind of comparable in color. You can see now that they've been on my arm for a little while, you can see here's our lip maximizer, lip oil, I'm sorry, lip glow, lip oil, lip maximizer. And you can see we still have brighter color when you build up that lip maximizer, but we have more consistent color with the lip glow. Uh, because again, it's not kind of that glossy formula that can move around. And then lip glow, lip oil, lip maximizer, lip glow, lip oil, lip maximizer. You can see that the shades have deepened as they have sat on my skin, but the lip oils are still not going to give you any major color change. In the lip swatches, I did kind of show you what it looked like after a couple of minutes sitting on my lips as well. So you could see how much the color change actually affects the color of your lips. So overall, I would have to say that this new collection really goes well with the new Pastel Glow eyeshadow palette. I like how they kind of used these same shades in the different formulas. I think it allows for people to kind of pick and choose exactly which formula they want. You don't need to get everything like I did, but I really just couldn't resist these colors. I do really like these shades. And these are just all great everyday products that are easy to apply, you can throw in, you don't need to look when you're applying because they are light enough. And the blushes I think are a nice formula. However, I, I am a little worried about the pink lilac over time. So just something to note. And I do wanna make one comparison with that pink lilac blush. Last year, Dior came out with this shade, 290 Signature Shimmer in the Rouge Blush formula, and it kind of gets hard pan pretty easily. And it was a little bit, we're gonna put this on my hand here. It's a little bit lighter than I expected. We're just gonna do two layers, and then we'll have one kind of buffed out here. And this is Signature Shimmer. And you can see it's got a pearly finish. We have a little bit of a blue shimmer in there. So it's kind of like your pink lilac with blue shimmer. And I want to see how this compared to the pink lilac. Now that signature shimmer shade, it sold out very quickly. It was really hard to find. So I know a lot of people were still looking for that. And this here is the pink lilac in comparison. So you can see we still have a sheen with the pink lilac, but this is gonna be lighter and more pink. We don't really have that blue hue that we have in the signature shimmer. So. Just something to note, it's a good replacement for the Signature Shimmer, but they are gonna be pretty different. 
So I hope this has been helpful so you can kind of see all the different colors and the formulas. And if you're interested in today's eye look featuring the Pastel Glow palette, I'll put that at the very end so you can just take a look at that briefly if you're interested. Overall, I have to say that the Dior Summer Collection has been a nice collection. The uh, Pastel Glow, as I mentioned in the review for this, and I'll leave that link down below, I think it's a nice palette. It's not a wow, amazing must-have palette, but I do really like it, and I have been reaching for it a lot. Uh, it's great for those lighter shades in particular, and I'm glad that we have some a couple of deeper shades there to kind of help deepen that up a little bit. And then I think that the lip products really go beautifully. The lip and the cheek products go beautifully with this palette as well as the other one that I did not purchase. And yeah, I have to say I'm happy with everything with this collection. So I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you have a wonderful day.